Log Talk Radio. Hey guys, this is Those Guys with your host Matt Marrero along with the other host. Who I thought was on the air, apparently is not. Not his fault. Hello there. Hi. Hi, that was on the air now. You are on the air now. Or is it all just in my head? I don't know anymore. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, Tristan, but apparently uh, the service that we use, Logic Radio, is actually having some technical difficulties. So I think everything's okay now, but there was a little weirdness there where it Yay. booted me. It booted me while we were in the um, pre, like we were in basically in like a, it's like a holding container, everyone. It's bre- before we begin the show, we're placed into pods. And British women talk to us and tell us how much time we have left until we have to start the show. So what happened is, literally, the voice said, hey, sorry, we're having trouble. And then the service told me, you're not in. And then the phone uh, British man said, hey, press 1 to start the show. And I'm like, what? And then I was told, you're calling back into a live session. And then I was told, your call is beginning in five seconds. Your show is beginning in five seconds. So there's a lot of confusion right now. Uh, what matters is this. What matters is that today we're doing Dragon Ball Super again. We haven't done this in a few months, and it's made me sad. Tristan, how do you feel? I'm happy we're back. Same. Uh, and we're doing episodes. Well, actually, it's funny because in my head there's always a discrepancy. It's like, is it, it, like I even forget we're in the 80s because we've been doing Super for so long, and it's, it's kind of crazy to me to think that it's been airing for 80 plus weeks, now 90, of course, but we're doing uh, up to episode 90, 86, or 85 to 90. But I think it's crazy, Tristan, that Super's gone on this long. We're not going to rant on that too much because we have to talk about the actual episodes. But isn't it crazy, Tristan? Like, Super's still going, and it seems yeah. to be going strong. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but anywho, what's even funnier is that apparently now Oob is confirmed, which obviously we knew he existed, duh, because he's Oob. He's going to appear. But, like, Oob has been confirmed by Dende, which is really weird. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I mean, to be fair, though, it's not like Goku would have known that Oob would exist. Like, he pretty much knew Oob, like, like that he existed. How would he know that without Dende? So I think that was a nice way to tie it up. It was just weird. Like, I was like, right? I, for, I always forget this is happening pre-Oob. It's weird. Because even um, Pan is still a baby. Why is yeah. it weird? Well, no, it just feels like... He, yeah, like, he, 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 Goku obviously wouldn't have known that Oob would, was a thing, you know, was back, or was reincarnated. There we go. Um... And born until he sensed his energy. Because I, I feel if he was around him and he saw the kid and he, you know, sensed him, he would be like, yeah, that's you. Oh, no, but here's the thing. He came into it, if you remember the last chapter or the last episode of DBC, he came into it with a game plan. Not like, yeah. oh, hey, wow, this kid. No, he knew what was going on. Everyone else was like, like kind of looking at him like, so why this tournament, kind of? Okay. And he was like, yeah, because he was like, oh, something special. Right. And then Oob was there. Right. So, like, he had to find out from someone, so it makes yeah. sense. It's just something I never thought of, which I guess is on me. Because mm. it's kind of, you know, on us. We're like, right, Goku doesn't just... I mean, like, yes, arguably Goku could sense all energy if he wanted to, but, like, he said, oh, it would be really nice if you could be reincarnated as a good guy one day. But he wasn't yeah. actually sitting there like, yeah, I'll check every once in a while. Right. Okay. Yeah. Also, that could have, that could have technically been like 100 years. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know, like, what's going to happen. So not like Goku's, like, checking daily. Like, has he been reincarnated yet? No? All right. Or, like, weekly. <laughs> but, um, no, but, like, yeah, so I can understand. And it's funny, too, because in the sense of the series, people have been telling him, you know, you've been focusing so much on space. Granted, I'm not blaming Goku for it, but it's so funny. Like, you've been focusing yeah. so much on space. You're forgetting that people on Earth still train and fight, you know? Yeah, that's actually, that was a really nice reminder, at least, you know, not for me, but to see Goku get reminded. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, your friends and family that you've relied on for, you know, almost your whole life, yeah, they're all still there. 
And, you know, they're I not just, gods, no, but, yeah, you know, well, they're still fucking well, there. Well, yeah, because, but, no, but you know what the weird thing is, though? Like, I don't know, like, maybe it's just me, right? Maybe it's a video game kind of logic thing taking over my life. But, like, I feel like, yes, if you train hard enough at something, you will master it. But I feel, and of course, you don't want to forget training because then you'll, your skills will be dulled. You don't just become a master at something and then stay that way forever. But the thing is, is that, like, even someone like 17, where he's like, oh, I'm constantly fighting these, these people, right? But mm-hmm. it's kind of like, how would that get you that strong, though? Like, you're still doing the same mundane tasks over and over. Like, if he was fighting those aliens all the time, then, yeah, that would make sense to me. Like, I don't know. Again, it might just be video game or, like, DBZ logic taking over my, my life and skewing my perspective. But in my head, it's like you fight a stronger enemy to get stronger. If you're fighting weaker enemies... You can keep your yeah. skills up. You won't dull them. But the fact that it's like, no, they've gained experience points. It's like, no, wait, that's not how. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, no, yeah, that it makes did sense. seem odd to me that 17 felt kind of on par with Goku. Uh, In I'll some ways, that. yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tien though it makes a lot of sense because it's like, well, he's you know working at the school, he's teaching. As a teacher, you can you know re- not only retain skills but also learn things to dull that out and give that out. You know, you can get a better understanding of yourself. That makes sense. It's seventeen yeah. that. Well, I don't think he should have been weaker than everyone else. Like we shouldn't be looking at seventeen like, all right, catch up to Roshi. But at the same time, <laughs> I feel. Right. No, it, like I feel like that's a disservice, but at the same time, it's just weird that he seems that powerful when yeah. it's kind of like, but what have you been doing? I've been protecting animals. Look, I get it, but like, just because you're vegan doesn't mean that you gain superpowers, 17. Oh my god, 17 still my No, I think that's, though. wasn't that the whole plot? I'm actually more powerful than you because I'm vegan. Was that not the entire episode or am I wrong? You can't tell me that Seventeen eats animals after after that entire episode or two episodes. I can't sit there and be like, yeah, he totally eats meat. No, he's a fucking vegan. Nothing wrong with it, but he's a fucking vegan. I'm I'm just saying. Meanwhile, don't kill the don't kill the poachers. They'll fly in and punch tanks and they explode. That's what I think I love so much. Miraculously not dead. (laughs) No, I love it so much. It's like this, it's like the Batman, Superman kind of thing where just Batman is just like, I don't kill them. You paralyze them, Bruce. (laughs) Shut up, Clark. You paralyze seven men today and they live fulfilling lives after. Like, it's it's a kind of situation where, you know, it's just like punch a tank. He didn't die. I'm severely injured. But you're not but, um, dead. And that's what matters. Uh, but no, it's, you know, again, though, I don't think that 17 should be the weakest of the pack. I yeah. think he should at least be higher than, um, at least be higher than TN and be higher uh, up on the food chain than Roshi. And um, obviously, even... No, because Piccolo has been doing some serious training. That's the thing too, yeah, by the way. I, wouldn't say I understand, Piccolo, but I'd still say Krillin too. Like I love Krillin, and he's come a long way in the recent episodes. But I'd say the androids would still have the edge over. No, I mean, granted, well, mm, I don't think so because with with what they Krillin have has done, energy still. You have half of that if you get sliced in half with a destructo disc. Yes, but still hasn't hit anyone with that. And probably yeah. won't in this because it's a kill shot, and you can't kill people in the tournament because it's a tournament. Right, right. Um, actually, come on. I don't think that's part of the rules. Was that part of the rules officially? Did yeah. they state that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot he about that. He says it when he fights Boo. He says, Boo's just like, I'm going to eliminate them all. And it's like, N- no, Boo, it, you can't, no, you can't kill them. That it's against the rules, you'll be disqualified. And he's like, "Oh, okay." Meanwhile, Boo mm. is fucking all right. It, it's like he's going through all his forms again. He's just not eating himself to 
to change forms, and he's not evil, at least for the most mm. part, except for wanting to I kill people. I think the funniest and then thing, being like, no, the funniest, he can't. He's okay yeah. with it. Which, yeah. Well, here's the funniest thing with Boo, um, or not just with Boo, but like just the in general, like just the general idea of like you can't kill people during the tournament. It's like, guys, the universes will be gone anyway. Are we really sitting here? Are we gonna split some hairs here? Are we really do this? Oh yeah. Well, you can't you can't kill the one now, but everyone else in that universe will be destroyed. Yeah, but what if his universe wins? Then they lost one. Because I think because it's a good trade off. Only the gods can take away life. Eh, actually, that's a good point. I know you wanted to be a dick, but that's a good point. Um, so and that's yeah. where the uprising begins. It's gonna happen. <laughs> but no, I do. It's gonna fucking happen one think, day. Oh yeah, it will. But I do <laughs> think that seventeen should at least be on par with, or or you know, more powerful than Krillin. Is what I'm saying. Like, once you get the Piccolo, it's really weird because, again, I'm not saying you can't reflect. Like, Piccolo is a lot of meditation. Did I just before and you disagreed with me? Or did I I still disagree. you? But I still disagree, but I'm, I can understand where you're coming from. I just think that okay. Krillin's more powerful, but I still understand where you're coming from. You know what it is? You just – because the thing is, you said all, all the time, definitely. And I'm like, well, 18 hasn't really done training. She just – She's his wife, so she'll beat the shit out of him. I mean, but, yeah, they're sparring in the yard, which was beautiful, by the way. The neighbors just walked by. I don't by. mean to be... Okay, so I don't mean to be... Like, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I think Krillin's holding back because that's his wife. I mean, she That's didn't. why he was like, really? Like, you give it... You really just did that? Like, because she's just like, I'm going to give it my all because I have to fight you. And he's like, but you're my... Wa- Ow, my nose. Ow, my spleen. When did you learn Destructo Disc, Connie? Um, so it's just, like, oh I don't know. I feel like he was literally like, oh, can't you hold back? Like, why are you seriously hitting me with all you got? Also, to be fair, Krillin is in this weird, like, Gohan, which Gohan overcame it, but he was in this weird Gohan area where it was like, oh, I haven't trained in a while, so my skills are completely dulled. Like, I feel like if he kept it up, he would be stronger than 18 because 18 doesn't keep it up. You know okay. what I mean? Like, well, cause think of it like this, right? You're like, oh, infinite energy. But Piccolo could beat them. So infinite energy isn't really relevant if you're that powerful. Yeah. I just feel like Piccolo has been keeping it up, like keeping up his training a lot longer. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, I'm not, yes, no, no, yes. That's why I said if Krillin kept up his training, I think he would have been able to um, be on par with someone like 17. But I still don't know, because it's still very weird. I still don't know what's going on with 17. Like, that's the weirdest thing. Like, they gave him so like, they powered him up so much that I'm like, guys, you understand right now that, like, you're making him stronger than even Gohan, honestly. Like, like, uh, like they didn't even show 17 doing anything. Like, if 17 was like, oh, you know, um, I, I don't know, if he had said something weird, like, oh, you guys have to be really careful because, you know, I had to beat up some mini Majin Buu clones. Because you remember, like, Majin Buu when he, mm-hmm. uh, when they, like, no, because remember when Majin Buu would, like, I, I think it was when Vegeta uh, blew up. Literally, he he blew up the scene. And he did so well in that. He was just on fire. And so, he, basically, Buu turned into, like, little mini Boos. Yeah, I remember that. If there was some shit like that where it's like, oh, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been doing this, this, and this. But literally, it's like, 17. You might be one of the most powerful people in our universe. What have you been doing? Just helping animals, man. It, it That's what hey, does it. He has a family, too. Which was, holy shit, I wish we had gotten to see the fucking phone picture. God damn it. But, I, but, no, but I'm just... Okay, no, no, no. Right. He has one kid, and he has two adopted kids. Still which not convinced beautiful. that fucking his wife and adopting two children helps you be on par with a god. That's all I'm saying. That is not what I wanted. That's not what I meant with that. But yeah, uh, mine was more of a segue to your point and not not <laughs> trying to add to the argument against your point. But I took okay. it there anyway. <laughs> fair enough. Fair. Which I no, knew you were going to fucking do anyway. So I don't know why I just went along with it. What I think is the saddest thing, even though, like, maybe they were trying to show that he's an android, 
right? But I think one of the weirdest things was when it, I, I mean, I guess I understand pragmatically, like, oh, if we're all killed at the same time, then no one misses anyone, no one gets hurt because it's everyone. But I think mm-hmm. it was really weird to have it be like, you know, I have a family. Oh, great. You know they're going to die, right? Yeah, we're all going to die someday. What the fuck? I mean, like that I think was a it, really awkward scene, you know? It felt like to me it was I don't know, it felt like a personal thing with 17, like he's like I, I guess it's weird cuz nobody else really acts like that coming back, but it's like both of them, it's like or not both of them, but just 17. It's like, yeah, I died. I was absorbed by cell. And then I came back. That was horrifying. But I guess, yeah, the idea that it's like, well, we'll all be destroyed together, so if that's how it's going to go, I mean, at least we'll all be together again. It's like, ah, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's actually a really good point. Okay, because I took it more like, I mean, granted, yes, we'll all be destroyed together is nice, but it's still just like uh, you have a family, you will die. Like, they will die. Like, I don't know, it was yeah. a really weird kind of... Because, I mean, I guess you're, like, what you're saying is correct. Like, you know, he he's like, hey, listen, I came back. So, like, either we come back or we're all in the afterlife together. Like, it's all happening together at the same moment, right? Right. Which I guess that's the problem with the DBZ world, where, like, you know there's an afterlife, you remember it, you've come back from it. Mm. Oh, yeah, I didn't so you think kinda have like that. that. To... Yeah, I guess Oh, that's right. what I thought you were trying to say. Although, well, yeah, no, they'd, they'd all be souls together even if they didn't keep their bodies. Huh. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> no, that's what I thought you were trying to say. What were you trying to say? No, 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 no. I just, I didn't think of that in as much detail, but you're right. The The idea of, like, yeah, I know there's an afterlife. I've seen it. I came back from it. It's actually not so bad. <laughs> Well, what's funny is I'm not even referring to the cell afterlife, even though um, that's what he was referring to. I was thinking of it more like the Majin Buu afterlife, because remember, the entire world was destroyed. Yeah. All right. No, because the entire – remember when when Buu, like one of the whole things, that's the reason why they went off world, not to save the Earth because the Earth was gone. I yeah, I guess they did have to wish back humanity again, didn't they? Yeah, well, no, shit. they did. Yeah, no, because I know it's been a while for Tristan, even though he's a super DBZ nerd. But um, also the fact that, like, I feel like even though you've seen the show so many times again, you really focus on the earlier arcs a bit more than you do with Boo. Nothing against Boo, but I feel like you really, like, that's all we ever really talk about is, like, the Frieza, Vegeta, you know, Cell, stuff like that. Um, but no, but yeah, once it came to Boo... The whole Earth was annihilated, and then they brought it back. And then, in in bringing it back, Goku had enough energy for a spirit bomb. Yeah. And everyone was like, "Holy shit, are we alive again?" Like, yeah, pretty sure we died. Pretty sure we did. Yeah. But um, anyway, so how did you feel about the buildup with these episodes? Because I know I said this last time we did Super, so I'm sure I'm going to sound like a broken record, so I apologize to everyone. But holy shit. Oh, first off, I'm kind of happy they took away some of the art that kind of shows. Because I'm pretty sure they were like, guys, could we take down the artwork that shows that everyone is in the tournament already? I mean... No, because I don't believe they had it. I believe they had the Dragon Ball stuff. No. You know what I'm talking about? Like in the, no, as the episode in, the in between, like in the middle of the episodes. Yes, yeah, the in betweens. Yeah. I mean, I think they alternated because I'm pretty sure a lot of them still had the the art of all. Of them. Oh, okay. Because I I only remember the Dragon Ball ones, but um, but still, I saw them and I was like, fucking thank you. Because how can you sit there and be like, is so and so going to be part of the team? Well, fucking, if you see the artwork. Yeah. Then yeah. Oh my god. Um, you know, I really liked, even though it seemed like super duper filler, even though it was their way of trying to get Tien and and Roshi into the um, 
into the team. I really liked the uh, the TN episode, and honestly, the only thing that ruined it and actually made me not want to see him in the tournament was Master Roshi. Yeah. And I hate it too because, like, I don't, I don't think it's a cultural difference. I really don't think it is. I think it's more so of like the writing staff. Even though when it comes to certain jokes, we're like, this is a really young, hip staff. But in other ways, I do think it's like, oh, this is what Roshi would do based on his actions previously. But I feel like they're not even basing it off of the manga necessarily. And I only say that because I know if you're basing it off Dragon Ball, this is like, yeah, this is Roshi. Right? But I feel like in Z, at least in the manga, you know, in that half of of Dragon Ball, they toned him down a lot. Right. So I feel like this is kind of trying to, like, ride the wave of the anime adaptations that were the, yeah, Mm -hmm. the anime adaptations that we've had, where he's just, like, super perv 9,000. Right. Over 9,000! What? That can't be. Okay. You are that much of a pervert? Okay. I can already see <laughs> their girls playing volleyball in Southeast Asia right now. That's impossible. How does he know? Oh my God! But um, I don't yeah, know how basically to make stop, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's just Roshi in a nutshell. nutshell. Yeah. Yes, but, it is. It yeah. So it shouldn't. It it isn't, and it well, it is, but it isn't, but it is, and yeah. And you know what the thing is, too, by the way? Honestly, if if we have to come to some kind of, like, middle ground, which I know some people will say, why? But if we had to, because Roshi still exists, and he, I'm not saying the character can't be a pervy in the sense that he's like, so, uh, any young girls around? Or like, ooh, I see a good-looking girl over there. The problem is when he's just like, so, I'm a kidnap. Yeah. Like... There's a difference, and I don't know why, like, because Roshi in uh, Super Android 13, right, movie 7, there was nothing wrong, in my opinion. I mean, there was, obviously you can say that it's weird or that it's awkward, but when I say wrong, I mean, like, we have to put that man in jail, right? There's nothing wrong with him being like, hey, look at the models over there. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Look at them. Oolong, you're a pig. This is weird. Um, but <laughs> hey, takes one to know one, pal. Uh, <laughs> just boy, <laughs> this is weird. You're telling oh, me that wouldn't be he's, that shit. He's also oh, a shapeshifter, but, but you know, whatever. I can change my form. What about you, old man? But uh. <laughs> Just beefs up. <laughs> you want to go, pig? <laughs> you want to go, little piggy? I will blow your house down. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, um, anyway. In all seriousness, right? I Oh, that would be the fight of the century, by the way. Oolong versus Roshi is just long overdue. Anyway, oh. uh, I'm just trying to say, right? Matt, what the fuck are you trying to say? I'm just trying to say that there's a big difference between him trying to look at models uh, standing on a line. I think they were all, like, standing – I don't know. They were trying to get in to see the models because it was him, right. Oolong, and a really awkward trunks that's like, literally, any one of these women could be my ex-girlfriend's grandma. I'm just fucking scared. Like, if I ever liked a girl, one of them could be your grandma. I don't like it. I just don't like it. Right? right. So Trunks was just not into that. But he was online with them because I forgot why. I think they just dragged him there. Um, yeah, I think they told him it was something else, and he got stuck, like, holding <laughs> the place in line. He's like, are you guys fucking kidding me? Right, that's what it was. So I, I don't have a problem with that because it's – I understand some people some be like, it's creepy. But, again, it's it's looking. Right, there's a difference between right. unless it's aggressive and awkward looking, which I can understand that happening too. Believe me, but if it's just oh hey that girl's hot, I, I'm not gonna say put him in jail, you know. Right. But this episode, I was like, yeah, no, this is this is something yeah. you'd see in the '80s or '90s, like that, like that joke, like those jo- jokes are something you would see in the Cosby show, laugh at the time it aired, and now be like, oh, my God. 
Yeah. Because of how dated that is, and other revelations too, of course, but like how dated it is. You're like, yeah, back then might have been like, oh, wacky, but now it's like it's not wacky. It's just fucking weird. Right. And not funny. Like, yeah. I don't know, like, like I really don't know who is – because another thing too, by the way, if anyone doesn't, uh, you know, remember, this show airs on Sunday mornings in Japan. It's supposed to be a kid's show. We get it uh, – I'm talking about we as in, in the U.S. We get it on Adult Swim late night because that's where anime is relegated to, basically. Uh, not all, but most of it is pretty much late night Adult Swim at this point. So at the earliest we would get it is like maybe 8, 9 p.m., right? Because they'll have a, an earlier airing of it on Cartoon Network. Like, you know, because I, I don't know, I guess maybe for any younger fans that want to see it. But um, – but yeah, so we get it dubbed, you know, here on Adult Swim, but it's meant for Japanese kids to watch with their families at 7 a.m. Right. I think I actually, it's funny. I think uh, uh, for some episodes pre Crunchyroll, there were timers on them, and I think you may have seen that, uh, Tristan. And the timers, you'd be like, why is there a timer there? That was the time it aired. So I think it was like 7:30 to 8 or something like that. Right. And that's AM. So yeah. you kind of sit back and you're like, um, what? Right? Like, the, ooh. And I don't want to, and I don't, like, I'm not a big fan in this case of pulling the cultural differences thing because it's like, this isn't a cultural difference. Like, oh, let's just accept it in Japan. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to put that on Japan. Yeah. You know? It's just, it's just a, a thing that really should be dead. Not Roshi, just the more outlandish things like this. Yeah. Like, like, and, and here's the thing too, right? Him fighting her and then seeing um, her underwear and then getting hit with a talisman, that's fine, actually, to me. Because in my head, I'm like, classic Roshi, I'm going to hit her. Wait, I'm actually a pervert. And then <clears throat> what, is, what, is his, what is his punishment for that? Now you're a Jiangxi. Boom. Right. Yeah. That's his punishment. Cool. The, but the problem is, is that before that one moment, it seemed like he didn't really get punished for any of his actions throughout the episode. Yeah. And it just... Because that's the thing. The best Roshi moments, best as in, oh, these are too perverse, but then you're like, oh, he gets his comeuppance, he gets slapped, he gets a tire iron, he gets a battle axe. <laughs> So he says something stupid, like, look at the boobs on that one. And then he's basically punched so hard. He goes, oh, God, all of you look pretty green. You're on Namek, man. Like, <laughs> fucking gets hit so hard. You're looking a little blue. Do I know you? It's King Kai. Um, uh, oh, they punched him straight into the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he punched in the King Kai's planet. King Kai said the planet's fine. Um, but you can't, you don't King, just, never mind. <laughs> King Kai, can you die any harder? What do you mean okay. by, he can explode. Goku! Oh. Goku, what the hell? Oh, God, he's such a dick. Like, oh my not, God. not to everybody else, but to King Kai especially. Just like... Oh, we brought the guy, you know, this guy says he can self-destruct, so I brought him here. Goku, what the hell? Why do you bring self-destructing bastards to my planet? I uh. I feel like, okay, so it's stuff like that that makes me really laugh, because I kind of sit back and I'm like, man, these are some great long-running jokes. Right. That's why I say, like, the the staff... It, they seem, at the very least, if not young, just self-aware. Like, you know what? Where would Goku bring this guy? Fuck it, bring him to King Kai's planet. <laughs> you know, like, this is mm. something... This is something I feel like we don't see often because... And I'm not saying we should see it more often, but we don't really see it often because, you know, an anime gets its run, or a manga gets mm. its run, gets animated, and then it gets its run, and then it ends, and then that's it. So you don't really have moments to do callbacks like this or to do long-running gags like this. And I know some people might say, no, but certain shows have, like, certain little tiny long-running, you know, like little tiny gags that they'll do throughout. 
But I don't know, nothing like this, in my opinion. Where, like, yeah, you could say, oh, one character always calls a character this, and that's funny. But that's not, like, it's funny, but it's not something like this, where literally it's like, oh, my God, like, every single time Goku gets the chance. Hey, this could destroy, a, like, the entire universe or the entire world, depending on what world I bring it to. So I've come to you, King Kai. Mm. Like, I'm pretty sure he's done this four or five times by now. <laughs> like, I'm honestly sitting here like, why did he not just hug Broly and instant transmission him to King Kai's planet? Oh, my God. Honestly, Even though. King Kai's just like, I'm not a bomb disposal unit. <laughs> Apparently he is. Oh my god. Um but yeah, I just uh, I'm I'm just sitting back just thinking about like the fact that also I love Dende. He actually doesn't have a bomb in him. Someone's on my side. <laughs> <laughs> because literally King Kai is like no one on his side. Like anyone that comes to his planet. It's like, "Oh, hey, we have a god here. Of destruction, Goku." Destruction. <laughs> Oh, man. But, um, you know, I actually forgot that, because it's been so long since we've watched this, I forgot that everyone didn't know about, like, the ramifications of not joining. So, it was kind of interesting that, like, I don't like, I guess they had to fill time, but, like, the Beerus Weiss thing, I know Beerus can be a little, but it was so weird that he was like, how do I just fucking tell them? Ruin their fucking day. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, Beerus, do you want to start a family? Shut up. Like, seriously, it's like, happy family. Let's tell them. It's like, what? Why, Beerus? I'm very <laughs> confused. Why do you want them to know this? What are you What are you doing? And but, then um, it's just the whole scene of him imagining Bulma screaming him out. and never Which makes letting sense. Letting which, him... Oh, yeah. It's like, I'd rather die than hear that argument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, the funniest thing is, people make jokes like, oh, Vegeta probably isn't a good dad, yada, yada, Vegeta yada. Or not even jokes, just observations. Ever. Well, here's the funny thing. I think it's not even just because he loves his kids. I think it's a say in pride thing Yep. in multiple ways. Say in pride, yep. like, that is my offspring, so I need to make sure that it gets the same, uh, I guess, pampering that I did because I am a prince. Right? So, therefore, these are little princes and princesses. Pretty much. Right? But more importantly, I also think it's, and it still goes with the same pride, but in a different way. I am the best. So, it's like, Vegeta, you're now a father. I will be the best father. Exactly. Calm down. Calm down, Vegeta. No! You You don't understand! Kakarot is a father! (laughs) Hey! Fuck you! Kakarot is a father! He's a shitty father! (laughs) <laughs> no, no, not even just being a shitty father. If he's a dad, <laughs> I'm a father. You know, like, yeah. I am the prince of all fathers. Um, So, like... And meanwhile, Bulma it, is basically just tweeting and, post, like, posting her fucking... her kid's picture out and like, oh, yeah, it's so cute, isn't it? Pay attention to me. Meanwhile, child mm-hmm. is screaming in the background. Beerus is just like, Honestly, are you though, fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> Well, here's the thing. First off, she probably was very attentive with Trunks. But when, when you have your second kid, it's kind of just like, just throw him in the wild. Basically, what yeah. happened with Gohan? Just throw him in the wild. Um, yes, but I don't know. But well, I mean, I know she had like, you know what? Vegeta can take care of this one. <laughs> no, but she had Trunks and Goten working on it, which to be fair, that's a good exercise for kids. Like, change the diaper. Yeah. I'm not asking you to... And also, not only change the diaper, but like, Mom, what if she falls off the tra- you know, the, the table and she falls off the balcony? Everyone here can fly. But me. <sighs> All oh, of you are more yeah. qualified Fair to enough. watch this baby than me. Literally, like, out of everyone there, literally, what's the worst that happens? Oh, no, she fell. You know, oh, my God, she's about to weep. All right. Reverses time. Like, oh, there's God. literally... No! Literally, like, everyone I mean, there I was can gonna save laugh that and baby. Say, 
Oh, honey, she's half saying like you are. You don't think a little fall is going to fucking dent her, do you? <laughs> Breaks the pavement. <laughs> Pretty much. Baby broke <laughs> pavement. Either um, that or her spiky one little hair sticks up and, like, yeah. she, like, kind of, like, po- pokes right into the pavement. Oh, God, but, her um, and Pan are going to have baby races. Who is fastest baby on planet Earth? Oh, dear God. <laughs> I just imagine the characters, all the all the characters going race, 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 holding money, taking bets. Um, but uh, but seriously though, <gasps> yeah, my daughter I, is faster than your granddaughter, Kakarot. Maybe take this fucking seriously. Um, but yeah. So by the way, I love Vegeta's reaction to Goku fighting with Gohan because it's like training him pretty good training him because like I hate to say this but like okay so like there's all these jokes about like Goku being an absentee absentee dad but like I don't feel that way because it's kind of hard to be there for your kid when you're dead right like it's pretty hard to be there for your kid when you're dead and throughout the show he was pretty dead a lot yeah, I mean, you know I, I mean? felt like, like that, too. What? No, I mean, like, I felt the same way. It's like... Uh, I don't know. It, I don't... It gets so tiresome sometimes to, like, be like, well, you know, it's it's not like he's absentee on purpose. It's usually because he's trying to save the fucking universe. But, you know, whatever. I- well, no, but I understand the jokes, though. I think they're really funny. I'm just saying that, like, if they're actual valid criticisms, it's just like, dude, like, he died for a year, and then he came back. Everything was pretty good, but then it was like, shit, we got to go to Namek. And then the kids went to Namek first, funnily mm-hmm. enough. So then they go to Namek, and then Goku goes there. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute, he's dead, quote-unquote. And it's like, no, he was in space. And in that way, you could be like, actually, okay. Like, Goku, get your ass back here. You have a kid. Come on, right? right. But other than that, then he comes back. He trains with him. Then the, then the androids come up, and then he's dead. Right. For a while. Seven years. Yeah, man. Like, he's dead for a while, and then he comes back. And then what happens? He stays. Mm. He's here. You know what I'm saying? Like, he stayed with Gohan and with Goten after that. And here we are, right? So, like, I don't feel... But I have to admit, though, I'm happy that he even acknowledged, though, even though I don't like to go with the whole absentee dad thing as a as a real, like, criticism, I still do think that he they we have to acknowledge, you and I, and the fan base does have to acknowledge that... Goku, even though he's believed in Gohan, I think he's never, like, not believed in him. But I feel like he did kind of forget, like, Gohan. Like, I'm going to different worlds. I'm going around this world to find people to train with me and to help me. And I'm forgetting, like, you're here. Yeah. Not, like, forgetting, forgetting. But, like, just the idea that, like, when the Cell Saga came around, right? It was like, fuck yeah, Gohan. The future. The future. The future. Then, when Boo Saga came along, it was like, actually, Gohan, I, you are the future. But the future's happening a little bit later, man. I'm right now. <laughs> Not like Daddy's Goku's saying reliving that the glory days right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bibbidi-bobbidi, go the fuck over there. Um... <laughs> Boo. Uh, no. Bibbidi bobbidi, go over there and die fighting Boo. What? Boo. Um, but yeah, so I I feel like it's kind of nice to make Kohan the the leader of the team because at least even if even though it's a you know it's a battle royale, so we're probably we're gonna get certain episodes devoted to certain people, but I don't think they're gonna be like multi episodes because I think it'll be weird. Even though I feel like the show would do it, but I still feel like it'd be weird to focus on like, all right, three episodes on one fight with Goku versus other person. When it's like, guys, there's all these battles going on around them. Are we going to animate behind everyone? 
Right. So I don't think they're yeah. going to do full battles, like like three episode long battles, maybe one episode each. My point is, is that, uh, you know, with all the fights and everything going on, technically team leader, unless like cause I don't think it matters. To no offense, like to go home, I don't think it matters. But still, I think that it would still be really weird if Goku was like, "I'm going to be the leader because I'm Goku." Yeah. It's like you know what I'm saying. It's like no, like you can give it to Gohan. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like, feel like it's yeah. good that way because Gohan's a good strategist. And he's even proven that already with him and Piccolo. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do, though, in terms of that. Like, I don't know if they're actually going to, ha- like, have them run around. Like, okay, you go there, you go up there, you go over there. Like, it's in the heat of battle. Right. But but still, I think just, I don't want to say, like, oh, give it to him, like, out of pity. But, like, seriously, though, like, the future is with Gohan. Even if Gohan doesn't train much after this, still, from the looks of it, we've completely thrown GT out the window. So we we really don't know what the future holds for Gohan post oob. Yeah. Or even or even the rest of the pre oob stuff for what you know, for for that matter. Like we don't really know what's gonna happen with Gohan now because we've really taken G T and we've just thrown it out the window. Like, obviously some would say, Well duh, Goku's a god. Yeah, but not just that. Like every other bit too though. Right. Like, you would think the god would be the only thing, but then everything else that's gone on where it's like Blue, Rose, you know, <laughs> like Zamasu, Trunks again. I'm sitting back and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, all this shit never happened. Right. But, um, but yeah, so... How did you, you know, it's funny, we've been talking about certain beats, uh, bi- beats, certain bits of the episodes uh, piece by piece, but overall, how did you feel about this batch of episodes? Did you like them? Do you think that they're too slow? Uh, would you like to cut out some of the more filler? Ask, even though they were trying to get people on board, do you think it was too much, like, filler? Like, how do you feel? I mean, I, <clears throat> even though we already know what the roster is going to be for the tournament, I think hmm. it's it's been interesting to see Goku go around to all these different people and be like, hey, how are you doing? So I have this tournament that I need you to fucking enter, like, now. It's like, N- Goku, mm-hmm. I have a life. Ooh, let's explore that for a few seconds. Well, then I beg you afterwards to please participate in this tournament because the universe will die otherwise. What? Wh- what? What? <laughs> but like you know, uh, no, yeah. Tien having his own dojo, which I was really happy to see. That was really cool. And even you know, seventeen out being a park ranger and all that, and he has a life too. It's like, yeah, he has a wife and kids too. What you didn't think he would? It's like eighteen did and can. So why can't he? <laughs> well, it's funny. You think that because of how he was when he was a kid, right? And I say kid. Because he was clearly a teenager when he was modified. Like, yeah. you could just tell. Like, he was either a teenager or, like, early 20s when he was modified. So, like, now it's like, no, guys, it's been, like, seven – well, not seven because, you yeah, know, it's been – actually, yeah, it's been seven-plus years Yeah. since that day. You know? So, like, it's been a while is the you know the point uh the point you know that we're trying to make here not 7 years though cuz you said 7 between cell and boo not 7 yeah. but at least 4 to 5 depending yeah. on what canon or what region you're going with because it's like either gohan was 10 when he fought cell or some say he was 12 so it depends on what you're talking about but like still the point is that it was a few years cuz go 10 was at least like 4 or 5 uh, though right. I think the official canon says he was like three ish, which is like wait what? But still, um, he was three to five when, uh, you know, he was kind of like meeting Goku for the first time. Point is, is that still that time plus a few years, or like at least some time after Boo. I forgot how long it's been after Boo, but it's been long enough, right? So that it's like yeah, yeah like you know, seventeen has had some time to grow, you know, meet a girl and. Apparently, be like, hey, so um, I'm an android. It's like, you have no idea how into that I am. 
And um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey kids, oh. uh, we have something to tell you. Um, we don't want to scare you, but um, oh, man. but your dad, uh, I'm an android. You have no idea how okay with that we are. <laughs> like the kids are like, oh. can you shoot your shoot your hand out like a rocket? Sorry, I can't do that. I knew a guy who could. Oh, though. yeah. Uncle Sixteen oh. could. We want to meet Uncle oh. Sixteen. You, you can't, guys. I'm sorry. Aw, you can go meet Cousin Ader though. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> he has to be like a cousin, right? In I terms of continuity. Seventeen even know that he exists. Probably not, but that would be the funniest thing. Just Jero, oh Jero. <laughs> oh man, they'd have a drink together. Oh, That'd be fun. I don't eat animals because I feel like it would hurt them. Neither do I. Why? <laughs> I feel like those two would get along so fucking well. Yeah, and for me, Seventeen what? had some of the best lines out of all these episodes, mm. and just dialogue overall. I had what was it? Um, right after they, you know, punch the tanks and they explode, and the poacher is laying on the ground. He just walks, and the guy picks up the rifle and points it at him. And he's like, "Ha! Ah, you can't dodge, you know, at this range." I'm like, I thought for sure he was like, "All right, fine, go ahead, do it," or he'd just dodge mm-hmm. and prove him wrong. No, he bends the gun around and says, "You can take care of nature, or return to it." Your choice. Oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, shit. I love that so much. I feel like that's just what you want your job to be. Like, you just want to do that all day long, don't you? You just want to be walking around like, listen, either, you, <laughs> either you take care Maybe. of Mother Earth or Mother Earth is going to take care of you. Like, <laughs> And even the other one, when he's facing the uh, the space pirate, or the space poacher, like, why do you think I protect that big island alone? Uh, well, I would, because I'm enough. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is the, that line is like, that was one of the funniest, like, macho lines that I've ever heard. Like, I don't know, like, it's kind of just like, why do you think she only dates me? Why? Because I'm all she needs. Like, it's, oh, okay. Like, I don't know, it's just like, felt like a, like, why, do, why am I the only one protecting the island? Uh, defunding? No. I mean, well, no. Kind of, no. <laughs> because I'm, because I'm all they need. No, no, no. Like, cool. Cool, 17. Um, and even the end, at the very end, and he's like, um, uh, oh, like, are my brother-in-law and sister entering? And he's like, yeah, of course they are. And he just, he, he calls Krillin the mini monk. And he's like, I mean Krillin. And he's like, yeah, you mean Krillin. Because <laughs> he bar- like, I don't think they've, they've never really hung out. No. Like, I think, I think 18 is kept in touch, though, because he's like, wait, yeah. who? You mean the one you beat? So in my head, I'm like, either, eight, either 17 knows because he gave his energy. Because if you remember, yeah. they showed 17 in yeah. that same outfit or giving yeah. his energy. Well, a different outfit or slightly different. Oh. But, yeah, he was giving energy, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, clearly he knows that all this shit. I think it's just funny how they've kept 17 around, like, sort of. Mm. Because, like... Obviously, it keeps in tone with the show. Like, yeah, of course, you know, best friend, uh, enemies turn best friends or turn allies. Right. But like, there was so much in DBZ that kind of like so so much that kind of got rid of that. Where like in Dragon Ball, it was like, no, everyone has the opportunity to be either an ally or a friend. And in Z, it's like, well, Matt, you know, it happened with Vegeta, but like yeah. that's it. Like Vegeta, boo. Yeah, and Boo had to be reincarnated first before. The, well, the the first Boo. Yeah, I know. Was okay. That's what I'm saying. First Boo. Second. That's what I'm saying. Yes, first, you know, yeah, fat Boo. But um, yeah. that Boo, like, and technically he's only oh, that God, way because he's Oh God, what do we call him or, now? 
I mean, we just call him Boo because he's the only Boo, but you can't distinguish him as, like, Fat Boo, you know, as if, mm. as opposed to the other forms of Boo, not just calling him fat, but, like... Well, he, well here's the thing. Remember, do we call him Toned he... Boo now? I don't, I don't know, <laughs> Matt. Everything's yeah. all new and confusing. <laughs> right, right. Everyone's but, settling um, down and having kids and... <laughs> And Boo's just eating chocolate. Um, <laughs> but anywho, um, but yeah, no, like I was saying though, right? I, you know, I feel like when it's, uh, you know, like when it comes to, uh, now you made me completely forgot what I was saying. Thank you. All I heard was Tone Boo, and I'm like, cool. Uh, question mark. The lookout anyway. fucking moves. Yeah, anyway. The lookout uh, fucking Moves. Sure. How On does it, I didn't know it could do that. Did you know it could do that? No. I just feel like okay. these episodes are just sprinkled with like things here and there. It's like, did you know that was a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. Well, how is that a thing? You know? It's just little stuff that I think... I mean, after all these years, you kind of have to move it. Like, I guess, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, thinking about it, but, it kind of makes sense. It's like, how do you think I keep watch over the entire planet? It's like, I just thought you could, like, see what was going on. It's like, yeah, I can, but, like, sometimes I like to get a better look, and, like, so I move the, the you know, the lookout over there. I'm like, well, well, shit. <laughs> yeah. We always just see them flying to a random location on Earth right. so with heavy vegetation. So it always looks like in the same place, but it doesn't have to be. They just sense right. the energy. It's funny. We just fly up and we see it. You know? Yeah. But pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But um one thing I want to say about seventeen that I do enjoy is it really feels like he kinda of took up like sixteen's mantle in a way. Yeah, that too. That I think it's nice. really nice to see yeah. Oh what I was saying yeah. was is that um even his wish saying. too. Like yeah, Goku's uh, but was like, saying, are you baiting saying, me with Dragon Balls? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, yes and no. It's like, what? You don't have a wish? It's like, well, no, I do. Like, I want to travel around the world on a boat with my family. Oh, <laughs> just talk to Bulma. Shit. Yeah, shit. She'll fucking make you one. And fucking but, um, talk her into rebuilding sixteen again for fuck's sake. Although I, I don't guess think he wouldn't even have his chip. Yeah, the chip that made him him. I don't. I wonder if she would have him backed up on her computer or something. It probably doesn't work that way. Actually, no. I I think with her it probably could have, but I feel like what they did was I feel like they didn't do anything like that. They were just no. like, hey, let's just modify you, take out the bomb, right? Make, well, because he you wouldn't. Cool. It would be the idea of, like, yeah, you could technically rebuild him, but he wouldn't be him. Like, it wouldn't be the same 16. Yes, it would look if like they him had the and chip, function like him, if but, they, yeah, well, if Cell hadn't the fucking thing stepped is, on his head and destroyed him, his brain, quote-unquote. Well, that's the thing. I feel like, even though he stepped on his head, you could have, like, worked with those remains, but there was kind of, like, a whole planet being destroyed at the time, so I feel that's like true, all yeah. of that shit got lost in the scuffle and yeah. kind of in the shuffle. And yeah. it would kind of, but, like, take away from 16's, like, talking, you know, talking to Gohan, that monologue and everything. Yeah. In a way. I mean, it's something that I think in Dragon Ball they would have done, and we would have been okay with it, but like I said, the tone in Z was, yeah. you know, different. And that's why, I, like I was saying earlier, that's what I was trying to get get at earlier. You know, you look at Frieza, you look at, you know, Cell, and you look at even Kid Buu. And, again, Kid Buu, you know, has become Oob, so, yeah, obviously you get reborn. But, like, still, Kid Buu was literally pure evil. And even looking at, you know, uh, King Cold, right, it was not even like his, you know, Frieza's dad was at least like, a, oh, well, he's a mediating force. Like, you know, I don't want you to do this, but it's your life, son. No, just, oh, I'm I'm the one who raised this little shit. I'm even more <laughs> yeah. evil, arguably. Yeah. Um, like, Frieza's just a shitty little child. I'm a grown-ass whatever race we are, and I don't give a fuck. Right? Right. You look at Cell. Right, and you're like, oh well, Cell sucks, but arguably Jero 
is even worse. He made sell. He made 17, 18. He made uh, 16. He made these, you know, these, these beings just to kill Goku and to kill anything in the path to kill Goku. Potentially even kill right. all of humanity. Because I don't think the idea for, for Jiro was, oh, I, they'll just kill Goku, and then after that, we'll all be good. Right. Like, that's all yeah. I ever wanted to do. After that, uh... After that, then like, we can start helping humanity. Right. No. No, 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 no. So, so, so yeah. building homeless shelters and, like, raising awareness for the, you know, climate change and stuff like that. It's like, ah, uh, <laughs> didn't he eat a whole bunch of... Don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. <laughs> That's... It's like... Wait a minute, is that his way to help climate change? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you just see Cell, like, his eyes glow red. It's like, population control. Oh, no, 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 no. We're getting, from one to Frieza, you're getting pretty Frieza here, man. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, so that's obviously something. It's like, no, shoo, right? So don't do that. But... And then you look at you look at Bobbity again, potentially even worse because he was trying to control. And also, by the way, I think we're all forgetting fucking Deborah, who is literally Satan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I'm trying to get at here is once it came to Z, although it's funny in filler, Deborah became super du- super duper nice in heaven, which was hilarious. But yeah, I like, knew he'd I enjoy hell, so I sent evil. him to heaven to punish him. <laughs> like he was uh, picking flowers with Chi Chi. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like does that does that work that way? Is that how that's supposed to work? I mean, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, arguably. Like, he's not gonna run amok in heaven. That we, yeah, the same idea that we kind of saw with Frieza later on. It's like mm-hmm. you're in hell, but you're in your own personal hell. Which means yeah. you're surrounded by soft gummy bears that want to give you hugs every day for the rest of eternity. <laughs> oh, that man. just seems so that appropriate. Funny. It, it it was. But anywho, back to yeah, so like every villain stayed villainous. Right, right. for the most part. So it's nice to have someone like seventeen be a remnant from Dragon Ball Z that didn't die, they villainous. Yeah. I, I know they... you could say... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know you could say, but that happened with 18. But again, it felt like 18 was the exception. And some of us even forgot that 17 came back to life, technically. Until mm-hmm. Boo. Like, I don't think they said outwardly, like, oh yeah, 17 is still around somewhere. Yeah, No. Un- yeah, until, until we Boo. saw, yeah. yeah, until Boo, and then we see Seventeen put up his hand, and we're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, and we're like, "Right, everyone was brought back originally." Therefore, you know, technically, it's weird though, because I always wonder if Cell actually killed them. When he yeah, that's them. an odd. I mean, that's what I always assumed, but yeah, well, it's yeah, kind I didn't. Of odd. Yeah, I never knew. It's only odd to me, right? Because I'm only, like, I'm only confused, right? Like, Matt, why are you confused? I'm only confused because of the fact that, uh, like, Boo... He spat out 18. (laughs) Well, yeah, no, that's true, right? Spat out 18. But also when it comes to Boo, right? With Boo, um, unless you, he absorbed you for energy, you were dead. Like, if he turned you into chocolate and ate you, you're dead, you're in the afterlife. Yes. But when it came to being absorbed for energy, you weren't – like, sorry, being absorbed not for energy. Being absorbed to gain your powers, you did not die. Right. Because they pulled them all out of there. Yeah. So that was a weird thing. But again, I, I still don't know, like, with Cell, where it was like, oh, I died. I was like, really? You did? All right. So – then if Gohan had punched second form cell hard enough, would he would he have thrown up seventeen? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I think we're getting a little off track. <laughs> I mean 
<laughs> I don't know why you think that's so funny. I don't. I just, just imagining that just playing out, if that had actually happened, just like, oh, okay. It's like, well, what? He threw up one of them. Why wouldn't he throw up the other one? I mean, I guess, but all right. So this is a little bit awkward. Um, <laughs> I'm going then, to leave. What about all the... Well, I would assume the people he drank were dead. It's like, if well, I punch yeah. you no, you're, again, you're... will you bring them back? Let's not test that out, shall we? <laughs> I'm just going to vomit out. God knows what. Um, basically going to be a human Cronenberg monster hybrid. Oh, good God. Hey, look at that. Cronenberg fans in the audience. Pretty cool, right? Oh, man. That's literally all Jero was watching the entire time he made us, which fucking makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. By the way, right, so we talked about Gohan kind of finding himself in his training. I think it was very interesting how Piccolo, they kind of had Piccolo toe this line between I'm going to trick Gohan, but I'm not going to be an overt dick about it. Right. Because I expected when Gohan was like, I'm ready to fight, Piccolo was just going to fucking punch him in the face. (laughs) No, I expected that. Like, go... Like, Gohan, you have to prepare yourself. But no, he waited. He was like, yeah, no, I'll lull him into a false sense of security. We'll have a normal fight. Uh, sadly, Gohan's going to fucking chop my hand off. <laughs> and feel bad about it because he's like, you told me to go full full power. Yes, I did. I just cut your arm off. Gohan, I can regrow those. I mean, yeah, but seriously, I can regrow it. I know you can. That doesn't make it any less traumatizing for me. Oh, God, I got shot in the back. No, that was perfect. Because I was like, because that even threw me off. Because I was cause I was like, great, you know. They're actually trying to show, like, hey, listen. You know, you... Uh, like, here's the weird thing, though. I don't the like fight is not that over Piccolo said until that... you kill your opponent. <laughs> right. I don't like... Got it. <laughs> yeah. I, no, but I don't like that Piccolo was like... Gohan, the problem is that you're arrogant. And I'm like, it's not arrogance. It's a general sense of aloofness. I mean, that's no, not, like, like, when he fought Cell, and then again when he fought Boo, he did get a little power hmm. drunk. But I felt like no, that was that... more just his inexperience than anything else. Yes, but you could say that's arrogance. But in this fight, when it's like, oh, you know, like with Piccolo, it's like, Gohan, your arrogance was your problem. No, it's the fact that I cut off your fucking arm. Sorry that I felt something, jackass. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. You know, um, like, I'm not going to be feeling this way about my opponents. I don't even know them. Who are they? My name's Jim. Fuck, now I care about Jim. It's more of the idea like, of... I feel like the underlying idea is, like, don't walk away or turn your back or assume that it's mm-hmm. over until your opponent yes. is down. And is not retaliating, not necessarily dead, but no. not getting back up or still on their feet to then a surprise attack you. No, no, that's a good point for one. That's a good point, and also something else to bring up too is that I do like that Piccolo brought it back to Goku because I was going to say, well, he gets it from his dad, not to be you know a jerk, but and then Piccolo was like, you get it from your father, and I'm like, oh <laughs> snap, the gauntlet has been laid. I was like, and you just was, did that. That was interesting because I thought um, Piccolo would be kind of training Gohan a little differently this time around, and like in the sense of, so we need to train your mind. Like obviously, you know, you're smart, Gohan. Not not gonna knock you for that. Like, but you're book smart. We have to train your mind in the sense of how to use it for a fight. Mm. I mean, and it's. I don't think that's the thing. I don't think his mind is the problem. The problem is, is that you got to shape up, scrub. Like you, like you've been using your mind. You can use your mind just fine. Like if we were battle of wits, you know, like trying to like uh, fight each other image wise, like image training, might not be a problem. But physically fighting, you haven't done that in a while, and that's a problem. So oh, like and something arms. that was very. 
That came yes. Back. Oh God, the animation <laughs> for those was awkward. <laughs> oh, was it, I don't know if it was just me. A lot of the Piccolo animation mm-hmm. throughout these past few episodes, not all of it, but a, a fair amount, has been a little awkward. And it's funny. It usually has to deal with his arms. So the stretchy arms looked weird. And oh. when he had his arms like crossed upward, like when he was trying to charge that attack against Goku, a little weird looking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little weird. And I was like, <laughs> cool. That's another another weird thing. The shading on Gohan on his Super Saiyan hair in the rain. Mm-hmm. They kind of toned it back, but I was I was a little confused because I'm like, look, I understand you don't want it to be like super duper glowing, especially because like he's probably like worn out. So maybe they wanted to go with like, oh, he's tired, so let's have it be less like shiny. But it was just like a weird like like you know they kind of muted the colors in a way that was like, are you saying he's in between? Like he's about to turn back to normal? Because they've never really done something like that before. So it was a little awkward. Also because his eyebrows were a bit lighter than his hair. So that was a little weird. But um but yeah, so is there anything about the uh these episodes that you really liked? Any specific episode that is your favorite? Um I don't know if I have a specific one that's my favorite. I mean, cuz I did I did basically enjoy them all. Like, in the sense that Goku was going around and realizing that, yeah, life on Earth is still going on when you're not here, jackass. No, I <laughs> I don't mean to be but that harsh, you mean, but, yeah. like, it's like, but Goku, no, come the fuck yeah. on. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> I did, like, I just enjoy Seventeen as a character in just the sense that he's out in nature. Um but something that I did enjoy throughout the episodes is we don't just focus on Goku and friends, like, getting ready for the tournament. We also get to look at the other Kais and the other Gods of Destruction and the other players that are going to be that we've seen from Universe 6 and 7's bout. Like, we get yeah. to see all of them and the little things that they're doing, which I thought was really cool because... You know, it actually feels like we're expanding Dragon Ball's universe. It's like, oh, yeah, there are other characters we can follow. And it's like, we can, like, kind of like them for more than just the cool fight they were in. Because they're getting a little bit more screen time outside of that. Yeah. I I feel like either, I don't know, I feel like they didn't give enough. Where I feel like yeah, with with what they've given, and it seems... Although that's another thing I, that I don't like about these past few episodes. Every single time they add someone new and they talk about how much time is left to, you know, like the actual uh, ring being made, yeah, the they make right. it seem as if the next episode will be the one right. where they go and do shit. So I'm thinking the next episode is the one where they go and do shit because it looks like the ring has been made. But I have a strange feeling that we're not going to get that and we're going to get some more build up on some of these other like uh these other universes, which I have no problem w- I mean, I have a small problem with it because I I do like that they're expanding the universe, like ex- literally expanding like and showing other characters, but I do kind of feel like I don't want to get too much of an attachment to other universes because I mean, I re- we already have one with uh, the universe with little mini. I forgot his name. Um, with you know, basically with cauliflower, and I don't remember his name. The one that's basically Vegeta, but tiny. Oh, Tarble. Ta- no, Tarble's brother. His brother. Yeah. Oh, you mean Chaba? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, because that's universe six, and <clears throat> or wait, yeah. is it six and? DBZ is seven, or is it flipped? Yes. Am I flipping it? No, you had it right. Okay, right. That's universe six. So our main one is seven. Cool, cool, cool. So um, (laughs) what I think is very interesting is that there's a... I I always... I keep on forgetting this. There's a main universe where Zamasu was stopped relatively quickly. Yeah. But... Yeah. But his, um, his mentor survived. I forgot that existed, so when I saw him, I was like, wait, what? And then it, all of a sudden I saw these other gods, and I'm like, right, right. I was like, that's what's going on here. 
I mean, but, I, um, yeah, I'm so I'm very confused about that actually. Why? It's just another I, universe where Zamasu was stopped. Right, and I guess they're going with that one. So then, where's Trunks and all of that? There didn't need to be. And, that and was, oh dear that was God! Could you imagine? No, there was none of that. That was a universe where, just like in one of the timelines, he found yeah. out. Wait a minute, you're evil. Well, gotta stop you. It's just that in our universe, in our timeline, he did not figure that out until it was too late, and then Zamasu killed him. Well, Zamasu destroyed. Well, because the, the fight, the ending fight that they had, he dis- like it mm-hmm. seemed like. The idea was he destroy he destroyed all of their life in that universe and took on its form as himself, and that was Trunks's timeline. So then, yeah, right. So then we're just look we're looking at the universe that was saved and everything is still there. Okay, I think I yes. have that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, I think you're looking at timelines and universes and you're trying to com- make them the same thing. And it's like, no, they're completely different. Like, yeah, no, the timeline they're... is still in our universe. Yes. So it has nothing to do with universe, I think that's 10 or something? Yeah, universe 10. Yeah, that has nothing to do with that universe at all. So don't even... Yes, that similar event happened. But as I'm sure you've noticed, there's no Goku, there's no... And that's all. And those are all the differences. Like little things can be similar depending on certain universes, but obviously there's other things that are going to be completely different. So in that universe, there doesn't seem to be a Beerus in the same way that we have Beerus or a Champa, or there's obviously no Z Fighters. There's no Saiyans. Uh, yeah. So, but there was Zamasu and there was uh, Gowasu. Yeah. His mentor. That, that's his mentor. Sakai. His mentor. Yes, who then struck him down. Like, oh shit, you're evil. I'm going to take care of that. Oh man, got to make myself some tea. Sucks that I had to kill him, but you know, evil. Uh, anyway, so I think my right. favorite episode okay. of How to Choose. Okay. What? Yeah, no, I'm getting everything straight in my head. I, I, I got it now. Good. Good. We don't podcast for a week, and now Tristan's like, I don't understand anything anymore. I think we kept no, like newspaper it... clippings up. All right. We have to get you like a whiteboard. We have to get everyone a whiteboard for that fucking arc. Um, God, that fair. Was... Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. No, cause I'm not saying that the timelines are something you should be. I'm saying that like timeline is different from universe. So it was separate. yeah. Zamasu came from Universe Ten, but they were in Universe Seven when the whole thing went down. And it was in Trunks' timeline that everything, like, all life is Wait, destroyed. he came from a different universe? I had forgotten about that completely. Yeah. He universe Thomas huh? is from Universe 10. See, there you go. I need the whiteboard, too. I completely forgot about that because of all the other timeline shenanigans that happened. But then, I so had already the Universe 10, the Universe 10 in our main timeline is still fine. So that's right. why... When, right. Right. That's, that's the one that they stopped him, like Zamasu. Mm-hmm. In our timeline, they stopped Zamasu from, you know, becoming all that crazy shit. It's in Trunks' future, that timeline, where it's fucked up. Yeah! So, yeah. God, help me. Um, anyway, just God help me. Uh, anywho. That's what I mixed up. Yes, and apparently I did as well, so it's okay, Tristan. Um, anywho, <laughs> so, yeah, Jesus H. Christ. Uh, but I think my favorite episode was Android 17 versus Son Goku, despite some of, or at least parts of, because I really loved that episode. I think just Goku fighting people was just fun for me, where him fighting 17, and then him, and then him fighting Gohan, which you sit back and it's funny. Yeah. The only reason why that one might not be my favorite, and nothing against the Japanese voice actress, because I love her so much, but I now realize why they've never done Goku versus Gohan, because... Right, they sound exactly the same. 
Almost. There are certain distinctions, but it was really hard for the voice actors to do that. Oh, because yeah. There's, because there's nothing – okay, in their actual voice acting, when she does voice yeah. acting uh, for them, if people don't know it's this, perfectly there fine. are differences in how – what? They speak. Because yes. Goku has more of a drawl or, like, slang, whereas Gohan speaks very well and very proper. Yeah. Yeah. So if we had to translate that to English, right, as – and I are talking in English. Uh, we are talking to English. It would be something like Goku would be like, "Hey y'all, how's it going?" Where like Gohan would be like, "Oh, doing pretty well, Dad. Thanks." Right? Yeah. That's how it would be in regards to like the Japanese voice acting. The problem is, is that when it's like you know when the same voice actress she can do that when it terms when it comes to talking. But when it comes to the right. fight sound effects, it's kind of like yeah, ah, exactly. Ah, and it's like ooh, like wait. It's the Who's same. punching who? I know they're both punching yeah. each other at the same time, but dear God. Yeah, no, and it's rough because Gohan had some points where he was deeper, but, like, he can't get much deeper. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's like Piccolo, right? right? So it's kind of like yeah. it was really weird, awkward. Where, like, I feel like if Goten was in the fray, you'd be able to tell that's Goten because Goten would be, like, super duper high-pitched. High. Right, yeah. Yeah. But it being Goku versus Gohan, I was like, oh, this is rough. Oh, this is right. rough. And again, it's not, it's yeah. not like against her. It's just, no, no. it's really hard to do battle cries in a specific voice when you're right. both characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't expect uh, almost any voice actor, really, to be able to just be like, ha, ah, yeah! Like, unless it was right. really, like, the voices were that different, and yeah. they are, but there's still something there that you go, yes, that's the family line, and it's cute that they're all voiced over by the same voice actress. Like, in a way, right. it's cute, but it also, you know, like, the little things in there, where, like, Goten sounds like this really, like, uh, not only like a child, but also like Goku in a way. Even though he right. wasn't raised with Goku, but he was raised with Chi-Chi, who also has a southern drawl. Right. So... It's yeah, it, it was just so hard. it was rough. I was like, oh no, um, but the fight itself was good, and I thought that it was still nice to have that moment, like I said earlier, where Goku acknowledges Gohan, like, oh shit, oh yeah, you know, you're <clears throat> yeah, like you you do exist, son. Because um, it felt like that moment that they had in the hyperbolic time chamber and back when they were training for Cell. Like, no, you know, right. I understand why Piccolo was the one who trained me now, Dad. You're too soft on me. and It's still that idea of, no, throw everything at me. You're still holding back. Gohan has to, like, say it again. It's like, you know, give me all you got, Dad. I'm giving you everything right now. I really need to know how I stack up. So he goes blue, and he's like, no, still not enough. He's like... Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> and then the Kaioken comes out, and Piccolo's just like, oh, God, please don't let him die. <laughs> Yamcha, if you need a tenth man. Oh, my God. <laughs> the scene with Yamcha. You oh. know what sucks? Before oh, that God. scene and before that Roshi episode, I was mm-hmm. like, I enjoy Roshi being on this team, and it sucks that Yamcha's not. But honestly, looking at every single person on the team versus Yamcha, they're all at this point, other than Roshi, more powerful than Yamcha. Yeah. Right? Because like, even that, Goku ep- fighting possessed hmm. Roshi, it's like, huh, you've been training behind the scenes too and haven't said a word to us, haven't you? It's like, holy <laughs> shit, even Roshi's kept up. It's like, Yamcha, what the yeah. fuck have you been doing? I mean, Grant, well, well, I, I mean, he- I don't know. I don't know if he's playing baseball still. Like, if he is, all right, fine. But, like, Yamcha, what the well, fuck he, are you in that, doing? In that episode, he seemed to be doing something regarding... Like, he seemed to still keep that up, at least. I guess, yeah. But, but anyway, right. Uh, that's a funny... Speaking of that episode, I know we talked about some of the negative stuff about it, but I do want to say that I loved... Even though the... Okay, it's kind of funny. So I'm not a big fan of that girl's character only because I wanted her to be, like, related to Tao Pai Pai or related yeah. to the Crane Master. So the fact I mean, that it was just like... technically she was because she trained alongside them, even though we never heard of her, but... 
Well, fine if we never heard of her because she was like such a little girl, they wouldn't have brought her to the tournament mm-hmm. at the time. Right. So it's fine that we never heard of her. I'm just saying that what frustrated me is not that we never heard of her, not that this is the first time that she appeared, not that it seemed like super duper filler. It's the fact that we had the opportunity to make her a relative of one of them, and I think that would have right. had a bigger impact of like, listen. Yeah. Literally, if she like, were Tao like, Ta- if, if she were uh, Tao Pai Pai's like daughter or something that. Or the crane although. master. Um, yeah. Well, because the crane master would. Like, Tao Pai Pai, you know, was an assassin, even though he was related to the Crane Master. But the Crane Master, like, that would be like, yeah, <clears throat> he ran the school. Right, yeah. So, if she was his daughter, then it would be like, oh, damn, like, that's very personal. But it kind of right. came off as like, hey, you left me. That was sad. <laughs> Here's a new love interest for Tien because he always, you know, really goes for those. And we've completely forgotten about launch, so you know what? Fuck that. <laughs> I think if you had brought her back, I'd be like, we did it. We made super great again. We did it. <laughs> we, we made it wonderful. We oh, made man. it beautiful. Look, we need a, we need to have lunch. We got to or launch. I, I don't know if they'd keep it as launch. We need to have launch. We need it. We need it. So if they had brought her back, I'd be because it was a thing where like you bring up this new character, and I know that, okay, maybe because they wanted that end to be swift with like, hey, say you're sorry because you're misguided. It would have been a bit different if she was like the child of, you know, the crane master. Yeah. But at the same time, she still did enough damage, and there was still like enough of a lesson there that I think they could have at least had her run away if she was yeah. the crane master's daughter. Like, look, I'm sorry, but I still can't work under you and then leave. Right. Because then you can build, like you can have that be a recurring thing potentially or never again. And that's cool too. I just feel like yeah. the fact that she was just some girl, some little tiny girl that was like, Hey, I got mad that you left. And now I finally found you, question mark. Right. Because it's kind of funny. I don't care about the whole, oh, we never heard of her until now, in uh, in the sense that we should have known who she was. But at the, at the, but the idea that, like, she never, ever reared her head, ever. Like, what have you been doing all this time? It hasn't been, a, like, a year or two. It's been a very long time. Right. I've been practicing like, witchcraft. I mean, all right, that might take a while, but at the same time... For 25 years? <laughs> yeah. How old were you when we left? Jesus. <laughs> no, yeah, because that's the thing, right? When when they left, she looked like she was like five, let's say. Let's go, let's go for five. That's the lowest I'll go. Okay. Right? She was five. Goku... I mean, well, wait. Yeah, if they left... At the exact time that Go, like right after Goku fought them, Goku was like fourteen, and now he has Gohan and Goten, and yeah. Gohan is like twenty-two, so she at least right. has to be like twenty-seven, but she yeah. comes off as if she's like a teenager. And how the fuck old is Tien then? Jesus. Oh well, remember Tien was a teenager at the time. Like, right. everyone well, looked older, like, but Tien was at least, like, 18. 16, yeah. Yeah, 16 to 18, when Somewhere he just looked there. older because because of the, the abs and the shaved head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then... Like, I'm sure he was only, like, two to three years older than Goku at the time. And I think Goku's supposed to be in his 40s? I think. No. No? Well, remember, uh, he was 14 when DBZ first started. Right. But, yeah. I mean, he you was, mean like, 19, Ball I ended. think, when he got married. Yeah. 19 or 20. Okay. So, I mean, yes, you're right. It would He would potentially be in his early 40s. You're right. Yeah. You're not so then wrong. But, um... Tien would be, like, pushing at least 50. 42, then, let's say. Uh, no. Because... Right. 
Because, again, if, if Goku was 14 and Tien oh, was, like, I 16 see. to 18. Yeah, at the yeah. World Tournament. Okay. Yeah, World Tournament happened every year. Yeah. 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 Um, now, oh, I think eventually it turned was... into every three years. But Right. That was the other thing that was really funny with Tien, like, afterwards, like, after the whole debauchery and she, you know, training with him, and they go out to eat. And Tien, it's like, oh, you know, the Zenny can help rebuild the town. And then Goku's just eating more and more and more, and he looks in his in his uh, coin purse, and he's just like, really going to need that Zenny. <laughs> <laughs> what I think, that's the one good thing, by the way, because I thought we were going to have to reveal oh. to Tien also, like, hey, listen, uh, this world's going to explode. Everything's going to explode. So I'm happy that, like, in a way, they, they introduced – uh, the situation to kind of like give Tien motivation. Yeah. The problem was not, not even that it was too convenient. The problem was is that it really feels like her character was irrelevant, and that sucks because at least if you gave her the role of being someone's daughter, I know someone might say, oh, but that's just living off of the fact that, you know, uh, she's a daughter, so like it still wouldn't matter. But I still think that there would be some kind of motivation better than what she had, because I feel like what she had was just their way of going, how do we get Tien to do this? Well, I guess maybe he would want the money. Well, why would he want the money? If the town is destroyed, all right, so the town's destroyed, who destroyed it? Some girl? Like, I feel like that's how they worked their way back from it. It wasn't like, oh, let's have a girl do this. Like, it feels like it was the opposite. Like, she had to be made just to get Tien into the tournament. Yeah. Where if there were other bits like about her character that we could learn about, that we could have her reappear later, like to come, you know, either like because she left or whatever, it would feel like, oh, yes, this is part of her character. But just her being like, I got mad that you left, so I learned magic. For 25 years? Has it been that long? Yeah, it kind of has. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, her being someone's daughter, or even fucking granddaughter, honestly, I'd be like, yeah. cool. But it's like, you left me at the temple a very, very long time ago. Right. Like, a very long time ago. So, um, I wanted to talk about, because I'm, I'm thinking of all the episodes and everything. Um, I think we're you know pretty close to wrapping things up, but um, I want to say, does this this stretch of episodes? Do you feel hyped for the tournament? Because like I want to feel hyped for the tournament, but I do feel like some of these episodes have kind of I don't say deflated me, but like it feels like it's like all right, guys, like I'm I'm not like I have to like obviously Goku <laughs> Gohan that was a great way to hype us up pre-tournament, right. but certain episodes. Even though I wanted to learn more about Seventeen, I think I wanted to learn more about his family, really. Like, I think it's weird that they yeah. say, oh, he has a family, but we're not going to, what, like, make the concept art? Or we're going to show you, a, we're going to have yeah. Seventeen show Goku a picture, but then not, not reveal awesome. them? Yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, that was a little weird. Um, like, I, I don't understand why they're doing that. Maybe they'll want to, like, I was wondering if it would be someone short like Krillin. Like, that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like female Krillin, and I'd be like that. Well, apparently they both have similar taste in partners. Oh my god! But um, oh man, I like I do wonder what uh you know they plan I, on doing with that. What's interesting I did is love love the hmm. line where Goku just runs. Uh, you know when he first meets Seventeen. And he's like, oh, I could tell it was you right away. It's like, because of your eyes. And he's like, I swear to God, if it's because you say we're both, we both look like androids. It's like, because cause that's what I was thinking. It's like, Goku, are you are you saying what I think you're saying? And 17, 17 just turns, he's like, well, we are twins. So it's like, oh, <laughs> okay, good. We didn't take that path. <laughs> no, no. Um, oh. One thing I want to say, though, is, when he was like, oh, who is this guy? Oh, his name's Jacko. Or, you know, they made, like, the, the funny, like, pun. But the point is, is that, like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, really? You don't know who Jacko is? Not that Jacko constantly appears, but, like, I'm kind of sitting there like, you have to, 17, who have you been fighting? 
<laughs> like, how are you this strong? You have to be in space. You had to have gone to space, 17. <laughs> Did you not go to space? <laughs> how, 17? <laughs> And just Jack, um, like, I'm taking all. It's like, what? You're not gonna like, you're not gonna tell him we helped you. You only came at the very end to wrangle them up. You're right. Maybe I'll send you a thank you note, but maybe not. Probably not. That was so weird to me because not that okay. I'm not saying that Jacko uh, hasn't been sassy in the show before, but I feel like most of his sass has actually come from the dub. Hmm. So it's very interesting to hear him be this sassy in the sub form. I was like, oh, man. Because I'm not saying he hasn't been, like, a sass machine before. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, like, seeing him in Super, right, seeing his lines in Super, I remember him in the dub of uh, both movies being a lot sassier compared to that sub, right? Right. So then I see this, and I'm like, oh, damn. They... (laughs) They pushed the they pushed the notch up on the sasso meter there. But um yeah. Uh, uh one what? thing I wanted to ask you about. Um please. So in eighty five when we got to see uh Topo kinda head out to go get the other Pride Troopers to fight in the tournament. Uh mm. what did you think about that? Especially like the formation and the poses and the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fan. So Universe my... Eleven is the Sentai universe. I get it. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Very interesting universe. Oh, I um I yeah, no, I, I think it was the muscles that were for me. I was like, oh because I was like, for generations that was the first thing I heard. I was like, cool. Right. Uh so that was that was funny. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy this stretch of episodes. I just do feel like, you know, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have happened. I'm happy they happened. Right. Uh, I know that we're behind. So it's not like, you know, I'm complaining about marathoning them like boo fucking who, right. I get it. But, you know, I'm kind of sitting here like, can we hopefully have the next episode be a tournament episode and not be, Oh, well, actually, you have to understand, this character has a tummy ache. Let's just, let's explore that for an episode. You know, like, let's... Unless it's Hercule, in which case I'm cool with it. Makes sense. But, like, let's just... Let's just go get on. Get on right, let's with do it! This. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's how I feel. Like, just get on with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I I'm not saying we can't prolong things once we're in the tournament, or even once we're... At the gates, right? Like if you want to be like, oh, well, we have to travel there. We have to talk to people. Fine. We have to have like a, I don't know, maybe a prelim. So th- fine, fine. Don't sit there and be like, yeah, we'll get to it eventually. But there's something happening on Earth right now. It's like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like we're moving on. Let's move on. Right. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, about these few episodes that we've done, which, by the way, I think I said it already, but 85 to 90, specifically. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to add? Uh, poor Chaba. Because he goes yeah. back to his captain, and his captain's retired and has uh, assumably a broken leg. He's like, because it kind of feels like his Roshi, because like, he's captain of the, def- the uh, defense guard. Mm. Um, And he goes to his old, you know his old captain, like, please, we need your strength. He's like, I'm not really as strong as I used to be there, kid. It's like, well, we could at least use your battle wisdom. I mean, you know, it's always helped me out. And it's like, I mean, I'm flattered, kid, but I really don't, th- I can't accept this right now. I'm just not, not in the shape to be doing this. It's like, but my sister, however, you mean the thug? That is my sister. But yes, <laughs> the gang leader, my sister. It's right. like I don't do well with her. Well, what do you mean? It's kind of awkward. Walks into the hideout. The hell are you doing here? All right, so hear me out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need your help, and I would help you because 
Because otherwise Good our question. universe is erased. Has nothing to do with me. This is exactly how I thought this conversation would go. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like, um it that's something interesting that I've seen from these characters. Like just the idea that like how does that affect me? You're you're gonna fucking die. Are we really like how are we really I, debating what's going this right on? Now? Yeah, no, like really, like what, what, like did well, we all sorry, take a I page just... out of Chi Chi's book for this one? It's like I'm not letting my little boy get fucked up and fight and whatever. It's like he's gonna stay home and study. How's he gonna do that when the entire world is destroyed? I don't know. Somebody else figure that out. I mean, I get it. You're attached to your kid, and I I commend you for that. But. Listen, like, say that again, but slowly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. But anyway, so um, I'm just going to say that I want to thank you all for listening in, as always. Uh, Love that you guys are listening in. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to mention that hopefully, right, um, because it's coming out on Saturday, hopefully some of you guys actually stop by uh, to see us at the convention that I was at, along with, insert name here, unsure who else we're able to get from those guys on the radio and those slash those guys play slash huge productions. But we're actually going to be at a, con- well, we were at a convention today, uh, Legends of the Ring, over in New Jersey. Um, and hopefully you stop by some of our wrestling fans who listen in. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a wrestling show or not, still, just happy that you guys are here listening in with us. Um, and I just want to, it's funny, I want to say the exact name, even though it technically already happened, um, but yeah, the Legends of the Wrestling event over in, it's, I'm not even going to say the name, because I realized, I'm like, I have to find the tab, it's like, Matt, 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 it's called Legends of the Ring, but it already happened, no one's going to, by the time this episode is out, no one's going to be like, oh dang, I need to run see them, it's going to be, this episode's coming out 1130 at night. We will, the the con will have already have ended that Saturday, um, but we still thank you all for swinging by if you did, and if you didn't, it's cool. We'll be doing some more cons in the future, and if you're wondering, well, Matt, what cons are those? Well, you can either check out our main website, which is egproduction.net, our Facebook, which is slash those guys on the radio, our Twitter, which is at those guys radio, or our Instagram, which is slash those guys on the radio, to find out, uh, you know, to get updates on what cons we're doing and stuff like that, because I know I'll be taking Tristan to some cons in the future because. You're our anime guy, Tristan. You're one of them. Yay. So you need to sit there with me and look pretty. Can you do it? Great. I don't know, Matt. That's that's a lot to ask of me. All right. Can you just sit there? No promises. Okay. There he, he stands the entire time. What an asshole. <laughs> um, so anyway... I want to thank you all for listening in, as always. Um, I'm just going to say that, by the way, if you want to check out some of our uh, Let's Plays that we have, which, by the way, Tristan and I actually beat, speaking of Dragon Ball Z, uh, we beat Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Uh, we didn't do any of the extra stuff that we will be doing in the near future, but we actually beat Dragon Ball Z Budokai on the show, which is real nice. So you can check that out over on our YouTube channel, Those Guys Play. Uh, we actually also, well, we played it for Season 3, and then we beat it uh, in a playlist called Those Guys Play Dragon Ball Z. We've also started Infinite World. We've played one-offs of Ultimate Battle 22 and of, of um, oh, I'll, I'll get it, Tristan, uh, Super Dragon Ball Z. So we've done a lot there of fun go. stuff on the channel. Yes, right there we go. A lot of, it's like Dragon Ball Super just flipped. Um, so we've done a lot of fun stuff on the channel, not just Dragon Ball Z related, but again, you want to check any of those out, search up Those Guys Play on YouTube and you can find us there. You want to listen to more of our podcasts, super related or other related. And Saturday has been going on for a very long time now. You can actually check us out through our iTunes by searching up Those Guys. Uh, if you're ever not doing that already, you can also search up our Blog Talk Radio account, which is blogtalkontheradio.com slash Those Guys on the Radio, or find us on YouTube and see our archives, which is Those Guys on the Radio. So you can also do that as well. You can donate to our Patreon to get a lot of cool things and also help us out. So donate to our Patreon, which is TG Productions. Search that up as well, if you wish. And you can also get some cool merchandise. Not only do we sell merchandise at cons, uh, but like cool t-shirts and stuff like that. You can get that over at our eBay, which is actually slash those guys radio. Or more, um, you know, I mean, eBay is good, right? Or you can go to our main website, uh, which is tgproduction.net slash merchandise, tgproduction.net slash merchandise, and get a bunch of our shirts from there, either those guys play variants or other fun stuff from the podcast. So that is all. Love you guys. 
And anything else you want to say before we officially wrap this up? Yeah, I think I'd like to say that I am, in fact, looking forward to the tournament. And I have enjoyed, like, looking at the characters, rounding them up. I thought it would be kind of dragged out and a bit boring, like you had said, because we already know the roster. But I really have enjoyed Mm. the idea of how. Like, I I know it usually, it's basically boiling down to, like, oh, what am I getting out of this? Or just that idea. But just the idea of where Goku finds them in their lives and kind of uproots them. It's like, what have they been doing? How have they been doing? Mm. That kind of thing. I've, I've enjoyed that. And I can't wait to see a little bit more from the other uh, Universal Fighters, too. So I I think I'm going to enjoy this, the next few episodes coming out. All right, I'm happy to hear it. I am, too, to be fair. I, I am, too. So, all right, then. So thank you all. Love you guys. Take care and say good night, Tristan. <laughs> good night, everyone.